Eric Dieters, the Bulldog, on Real Talk 1160. Let me let me begin by my Facebook social networking promo for today's show, which I think will appropriately lay it out for you. Votto almost does a Hamilton. Do you know what a Hamilton is, TC? Oh, the uh, home run deal. Yeah, a Hamilton yeah. is four home runs. Votto did three. So he close. almost did a Hamilton. He was earning that money. I think we can all agree that uh, Johnny Depp, although he's a little weird, he loves France more than the United States, kind of a socialist, uh, but he's a good actor. Dark Shadows sucked. <laughs> I mean, the one of the worst things that a movie can do is if you try to make it a comedy, a drama, a horror movie, they couldn't make up what they wanted to – they couldn't make up their mind what they wanted Dark Shadows to be. It had some funny lines, and then somebody would die. Oh, well, now see, was it supposed to be a takeoff on the original TV show? Yes. Okay, well, that's the pro- – did you ever watch the original Dark Shadows? Scared the hell out of me when I was a little kid. <laughs> that was a little different, and it was a very low-budget yes. TV show. Yes. I mean, you could see microphones. You'd see stage hands running around back, you know, behind this. I mean, it was really low. What were they trying to do? I mean – I don't, here's, here's, if I'm going to make a movie, here's what's so funny. I'm going to make a movie. Let me see what, hey, let's do Dark Shadows remake. <laughs> they could just follow Johnny Depp around. That'd Barnabas be- Collins. Yeah. Uh, Mother's Day was very nice, thanks to Montgomery Inn. See, we were asked, my wife asked, she said, you know, the guys ought to cook dinner for us, ladies. And they all came over to our house. Her mom, her sister, herself, my daughter. The four moms in our house. And instead of cooking, I just bought Montgomery in. Smart. And I tell you right now, everybody loved it. Uh, another thing is I went to Joseph Beth on Saturday. And uh, I picked up Northern Kentucky Magazine uh, to read an article about my buddy from some other radio station who was on the cover. And inside, no I found out. This is funny. By the way. You know, I'm not, you're just saying I'm not supposed to mention Willie's name. Do you know Willie praised me Friday and gave me Oracle status on his radio station? Okay, can't judge based my salvation on that guy, can I? He, he, he talked about friend. me and gave me Oracle status. Okay, he's stealing your line, first of all. You could sue him for that. <laughs> second of all, second, he's on another radio station. <laughs> This is it. If you talk about that, people are curious. We don't want. We don't even acknowledge that. They no, I'm just exist. trying to. Don't re- even look that way. I'm just trying to recruit his friends. But anyway, don't look. This. Don't point. Don't stare. Northern Kentucky Magazine, <laughs> TC. They put a. This is hilarious. The the uh, like favorite massage, favorite masseuse, favorite salon, and you want favorite, for favorite masseuse. This is hilarious. I was third. I was picked third. Favorite Northern Kentucky celebrity. Now. Here really? is here is what's so funny about this. All right, number one was Herzog, the weatherman. Really, number two was Chris Collinsworth, who is only on Monday Night Football, is a national <laughs> figure. I mean, it shouldn't even be close. Collinsworth is the numero hey, as a Northern Kentuckian. I will tell you. Chris Collinsworth is the biggest, baddest, most famous Northern Kentuckian there is. Of course, he was number two in the depth chart back in the day anyway. Listen, Fort Tia behind David Verser. <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> he was drafted after Verser. But I was number three after them. Well, that's good company. It is good company, but I thought it was just humorous that, that, I, was, you- that I was selected number three. Well, that shows you just how important the weather guy is, doesn't it? Oh, my God. Yeah, let's talk about that. How did the weather guy beat Collinsworth? <laughs> The, because, I'll tell you why. Exactly why. Paul Brown used to get upset about the same thing. The weather affects everybody. Yeah. Now, I was I was told by somebody else at another radio station that it's the women that drive the weather forecast. The, the, that, they, that they do all the fancy weather because the women care about the forecast. Now, here's the other thing that's funny. Tomorrow at 1 o'clock in Lexington, I have a hearing on my little bar thing. Yeah. So Saturday, I get in the mail FedEx from Larry Forge's office a package of material from Bar Council's filings relative to that hearing. And you're going to find this humorous, TC, because they quote you in this. Uh-oh. They, they having nothing on me, having absolutely nothing on me, have gone back and have been listening to our podcasts 
and April and May. I mean, they've spent a lot of time listening to our radio shows. And wow. they take exception that I call Jay Garrett a Niedermeyer. <laughs> That's now, illegal in Kentucky, now, now, isn't I want to tell you something. Jay Garrett is not a judge, so I see no reason why he should not. So I was beginning to really poke Jay Garrett even more, yeah. since he's obviously irritated by this. I was thinking about Jack Wagons can become Jay Garrett's. You know, they sound alike. Jack Wagon, <laughs> Jay Garrett. They both begin with J. You know, Jack Wagon, three syllables. Jay Garrett, three symbols. Syllables. Yeah. Of course, I mean, if he's listening to our podcast, you know he, you're just he's just getting more and more ticked off every day. So, I, and I thought I'd start today because he's got to obviously listen in today, uh, thinking what am I going to say. So I thought I'd give that to him. Oh, get this! This is hilarious too. They claim that I should not be allowed to be a lawyer because I asked for an armed revolution, which would have led to the overthrow of our country. Now, TC, if there's one thing. <laughs> That I know that I make really clear oh. on this radio station is how much I love America. And didn't I say on the armed revolution that we wouldn't bring bullets and we wouldn't shoot anybody? Yes, you did. That the whole idea was just to scare the hell out of them? Yes, you did. And, yes, and you I was did. thinking, you know, I've said I wanted to be king for a day, so now they're going to accuse me of being a monarchist. He uh, wants to be a king. Yeah, he, that's it. I'm not kidding. TC, I am not kidding you. They've actually said. I should not be a lawyer in Kentucky because I have called for the overthrow of our government by that armed revolution. Wow. They don't get well, radio shtick either. You know, I guess not. I guess they don't get it. <laughs> and then another thing I mentioned about, like, I don't need my Kentucky law license because I could just be an Ohio lawyer and pro hack VJN. Yeah. They thought that I've been doing that this whole time, that I've still been practicing law in Kentucky. Every day you say that you're not. Don't Every they hear that day. part? Every single day I say I'm not. All right. You know what? If they're listening to us. They are. They're listening right I'll guarantee you they're listening right now or they will listen to this podcast. Well, good morning, gentlemen. Good afternoon, whatever the case may be. <laughs> Have a bottle of green water on us. I say this, okay? Every day you say something. Now, if I was this guy, if I was Jay Garrett. I'd be pretty ticked off, like, oh, he said that about me again. Because he doesn't have a microphone. He can't, just, right. you know, respond back. So <laughs> so that's just making this guy more and more determined to fi- just to dig deeper and deeper and deeper, which he's wasting taxpayers' money. But if if we approach it the other way, here, here's some Montgomery in. Here's some snappy tomato. They'd have accuse me of bribe. You're just trying to make nice. We'll have Chuck drop it off. Hey, let's do the feel-good song for Jay Garrett. <laughs> Is it Every, ready? You want to do that? Yeah, let's do the feel-good song for Jay Garrett. We'll now, dedicate this to Jay Garrett. Wouldn't it be nice if Jay Garrett wasn't a Niedermeyer? Now, I just want to say, I, I, I think we could have picked a better feel-good song On a for sunny, today. on a cloudy day in the tri-state, mm. we dedicate this to Jay Garrett. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you had some humanity about you. Nice. And you Be weren't nice. a Niedermeyer. Who sings this song? Oh, by the way, they explained in this this memo what a Niedermeyer meant. That that's a negative connotation. They went through a whole explanation of explaining to the character and fitness committee what a Niedermeyer is. You have to define what is is. You know what my response to this all was? What's that? I stand by the Niedermeyer comment. I love talking over this song. <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice, TC, if everybody could just get along? If I could win the lottery? Tell me how you really feel about this song, TC. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's all right. You know, I mean. Tell the ladies and gentlemen the American jury what song you wanted to be. I was thinking Phil Collins and Phil Bailey, Easy Lover. Phil Collins will never be a feel-good song. Oh. <laughs> Easy stomach. Don't turn over. He didn't mean that. <laughs> you're, you're joking, right? I'm joking. Maybe one day we'll let Phil off the bench. By the way, you see how old these guys are now on their 50th tour? Oh, my God. Get out to Geritol. Al Jardine, like, overnight has become, like, ancient. <laughs> how about Bruce Johnston uh, ripping into Barack? What did he say? Did he call him the uh the By the way, president? do we have anything to talk about Barack today? Oh, of course He's the gay we president. Do. Are you kidding me? I think Jay Garrett might be a Barack Obama supporter. You know? 
<laughs> now, see, here's a feel good song. Yes, I chose this. Did you? Let the good times roll. When we come back, we'll have pop culture, sports, and general overall radio superbity on Real Talk 1160. Stick around. Coming up at 728 this morning, it's the O'Reilly's Talking Points. Bill O'Reilly coming up here on Real Talk 1160. And now, back to the congenial Bulldog. Eric Dieter's the Bulldog on Real Talk 1160. We have some fan mail, which I need to share. How do you starve an Obama supporter? Hide their food stamps under their work shoes. (laughs) Oh, now, now, now. That's from uh, Bulldog Nation member Beverly. Uh, Let me see. We also got emails. Everybody correcting my um, Denver pile was not Gilligan, and I found that. I figured that out. Was that on the blog? It was it was Friday. It yeah. was, I found it out too late. I was like, oops. It was like Bob Denver, Denver Pile. Oops, oops. I'm sorry. I should have known that. But uh, what the heck? Well, what can you say? What can you say? It happens. It happens. You know, sometimes things happen in life that you don't like. Pop culture. Here we go. Uh, the Avengers. This is incredible. Has hit one billion in box office sales. Wow. The second week. It did 103 million after doing. This is just in the United States. Worldwide, it's cranking. It's going to go to Russia and China, I think, this week. Dark Shadows was second at 28 million. Terrible movie. <laughs> think Like a Man, 6.3. Hunger Games is finally falling off at 4.4. Uh, Desperate Housewives is finally over. Thank God. I watched the first three years of that, and then I finally said, I've had enough of this. I don't even know what happened. I don't care what happened. Guess what is the number one illegally downloaded show, TC? Desperate Housewives. Game of Thrones. That's what I meant. Which is on HBO. <laughs> Never heard of it. It's pretty good. It's about. It's kind of like the uh, Jackson trilogy, the uh, Hobbit, you know, all those kind of shows. Okay, okay. Uh, Bobby Christina has reportedly cut off contact with Dad Bobby. Uh-huh. And sources have Sad. reportedly said that Houston family feels he's trying to exploit Bobby K to make his reality show more marketable. <laughs> you think? Did you see the new cover of news? First, we have, you know, these, these magazines, they'll do anything because they're dying. I mean, I don't know if you picked up a time in Newsweek. There's 13 pages in it. Uh, <laughs> time comes out with like the, the breastfeeding reader. mom. Yeah. The breastfeeding mom. Newsweek, it's going re- to come out. Get this. The cover of the next issue, they depict President Obama with a rainbow halo over his head. Yes. And the title is The First Gay President. I mean, if I'm Barack Obama, I'm like, thank you very much. Well, you go, girl. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Where'd they? I mean, come on. Where did they get that? This is, like I said before, this is such a non-issue. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm in favor of, of uh, 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 same-sex marriage, but I'm going to leave it up to the states to decide. So he, he's not taking any responsibility for anything that happens, you know? Yeah. And Will Ferrell was on Saturday Night Live, and I'll be honest with you, other than the opening uh, scene where he and uh, Joe Biden got together and uh, he co- Joe Biden was complaining about uh, not getting enough recognition for the gay issue. So uh, Will Ferrell played George Bush coming in to talk to... Vice President Biden, it was hilarious. He goes, I don't know, how you feel? Dick Cheney was president. <laughs> That's the way I felt. <laughs> Dick Cheney was president. It was funny. He talked about shotguns. He goes, you don't have a shotgun? Huh? You're not vice president. I mean, it, it's just, it was fun. But other than that, it was, I'm telling you, it wasn't that good. Yeah. Well, I yeah. was disappointed. You know, it's, it's, it's interesting. A lot of times when you have former cast members come back and host the show, it's like that's the biggest part of the show is the, the, right. scenes, the skits that they're in. And then John Travolta, Carrie Fisher says, what's the big deal? Everyone knows John Travolta was gay. I mean, she says it just matter of fact. Oh, my God. No, she did. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Did she say that? For, oh, my God. <laughs> that's, a, that's a pretty good one. He can do John Travolta, too. Who? What? You. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> that was a pretty good uh, Vinny. Thanks. So really, so um, she just um, she just comes out. Everybody out of the knows closet, these, huh? And apparently, they got Kelly Preston in hiding. I mean, I can tell you right now, how humiliating that you even have to. And let's say it's untrue. 
Right. It's still humiliating. I mean, I couldn't imagine like how my wife would feel if they're like, Harry Dieters is gay. <laughs> I mean, it'd be like, what? Oh, come on. Everybody knows Brad Pitt is gay. What? <laughs> that's, that's, that's a rumor. If we start that one, everybody will go nuts. But, wow. We have no information to dispute that. Now we go to sports. Joey Votto hit a grand slam in the ninth <laughs> inning for his third home run of the game on Sunday, rallying the Reds to a rain delay. I mean, it was a – by the way, I had tickets to the game, so and did I did not go. I'm like, man, I am not going to go down there. The family had tickets, too, and didn't go. Yeah, n- nobody else did, too. I think there was 1,000 people in the stands. Wow. Nine to six victory over the Nationals. Man, he hit three homers. One short from a Hamilton. Uh, today at 7-10 at Atlanta – the Reds roll out Homer Bailey. Uh, the Heat beat the Pacers 95 to 86. LeBron and Dwayne Wade lit it up. Bosch went out with an abdomen pull. Hope he comes back. The, Gr- the Clippers knocked off the Grizzlies in game seven 82 to 72. Dun 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 dun. dun. Uh, the Clippers beat the Coyotes 4 to 2. Not the Clippers, the Kings. Come on, we got this typo, wrong. It's typo, the Kings. Typo. Beat the Coyotes 4-2. to And, of course, Saturday night, my Washington Capitals lost to the New York Rangers. So it's the Rangers versus the Devils and the Kings versus the Coyotes in the Stanley Cup. Uh, the Players' Championship belongs to Matt Kuchar. Tiger did make the cut, thank God. He not humiliating himself anymore. Roger Federer won the Madrid Open. For the third time Sunday. Uh, let me see. On the new blue clay court. Overtaking Rafael Nadal for number two ranking. Uh, Kyrie Irving was the top rookie of the year. He's a rookie of the year from Cleveland. Uh, what else? In one of English soccer's most stunning comebacks, Manchester City scored twice in stoppage time to win 3-2 to two and claim its top flight crown, its first top flight crown in 44 years. How you like that? A little soccer news for everybody. There you go. Uh, let me see. In science, how you like this? Five of the 25 least popula- polluted cities in America. Least polluted. Bangor, Maine, which, by the way, Maine is the setting for the Dark Shadows show. Yeah. Sarasota, Florida, where I used to vacation. My wife went to college. Burlington, Vermont. Bismarck, North Dakota. Port St. Lucie, Florida. So Bangor, Maine, if you got some respiratory problems, head off to Bangor, Maine. That's where you need to go. And a Gallup poll says tracking emotional health in January, began tracking uh, emotional health January 2008. Why? Because the world was ending. Uh, (laughs) We now apparently have reached the highest point of happiness since 2008. I'm like, yeah, right. Who's happy? Got Jay Garrett up your colon. You're not happy. <laughs> well, you know something? There's th- maybe some good news with that. Now, the world was supposed to end, I think, three times already, and we've missed those dates, right? Right. Remember what Mark Twain said about Cincinnati? The world's going to end being Cincinnati because of how many years is I mean, it? Ten years later. Ten years later. What if the rest of the world has already ended? We're just <sighs> waiting to catch up. That could be. You may not have to worry about this whole Kentucky bar thing. That's right. When we come back, we'll dive into the news, including a very funny question on a New Jersey test for kids on Real Talk 1160. Eric Dieter's the Bulldog on Real Talk 1160. According to the Associated Press, some New Jersey parents are steamed. They're just steamed, man. They're steamed. Steamed. Why are they steamed? About a question on a statewide standardized test last week. That asked some third graders to write about a secret and why it was hard to keep. Oh, that's that's cheating, man! That is unbelievable. Um, I hope none of them were in witness protection. How about this? Really? How about this? A third grade? I mean, how unbelievable is that? You basically are telling a kid who's supposed to keep a secret to reveal a secret, and and, and can you imagine some of the right. things? Um, I found out that my dad's not my real dad. <laughs> um, uh, my dad watches porn every night on television when my mom's not around. The UPS man stays for about 20, 30 minutes every day. I mean, isn't that terrible? <laughs> that is. That is. 
You know, I mean, no, no, I got a question. What jack wagon even anymore. thought about that question? Yeah, really. And what's the relevancy? Remember, Art Linkletter used to do that. Hell in a handbasket. Yeah, but that's Art Linkletter. His show was to try to get kids to say the darndest things. And he would, he would ask, he would set them up the same way. He would say, What did your parents tell you not to say when you got on television? <laughs> right. Oh, that my dad called in sick today and he's not really <laughs> sick because he's here watching the show. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the worst thing about a secret. It, first of all, they're hard to keep. But if if you tell someone a secret, it's not they a now secret have the anymore. Res- but you put the responsibility of them having to keep the secret now. Right. You know, there's a great quote from J. Edgar Hoover, Mister FBI for decades and decades. Said there, he said this: there is something intoxicating about a secret. Yes. Intoxicating. And two people can keep a secret as long as one person I mean, is I have dead. taken a vow to keep all the secrets that TC has told me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I will not keep the secrets of Brad Amster because he hasn't kept my secrets. <laughs> he's, every secret I've told Amster, he's put on Facebook. You know, I was always, when you talk about secrets, imagine if one day your pet could talk. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Think about the things your dog knows or has witnessed. Have you ever had an animal watch? (laughs) (laughs) They kind of turn their head. (laughs) I mean, that's probably pretty common. Can you imagine what they're thinking? Like, what the heck is all of that? You leave the room, Casey. Out of the room, Casey. (laughs) (laughs) But just imagine how much stuff would would happen if, if your dog could talk. If dogs could talk. Well, they've done movies about that to illustrate. Imagine what they would say. Uh, Let me see. Mitt Romney gave a graduation address at Liberty University, a big evangelical college. Yeah. And then uh, New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg Bloomberg, 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 Bloomberg. told the University of North Carolina graduates last week that the gay marriage vote there in North Carolina shows there's still a lot of work to be done for civil rights in this country. Now, isn't that hilarious? North Carolina invites the mayor of New York... And he stings the state yeah. for their vote on gay rights. I'd say, don't let the door hit you in the butt going out of yeah. town, Mayor Bloomberg. Of course, Mitt played right up to the crowd, didn't he? But see, that's the beginning. See, Bloomberg, ne- yeah, he played to the crowd. Bloomberg TV, Bulldog TV. See, we're going to be in the same category as Bloomberg. He's a billionaire. I'll be a billionaire. Jay Garrett will come looking for a job after Bar Council fires him. Okay. Senator, governor, president, and now cable TV show mogul? Yes. Man, you're not going to get any sleep. I'm not. Uh, Barack, after Barack Obama announced his support for gay marriage, he and his team embarked on a quiet campaign, obviously not too quiet, they couldn't keep a secret, to contain the possible damage among religious leaders and voters. Hey, uh, hey, uh, Pastor Jim, I just want to call and tell you, you know, uh, we had to do this, you know, but we still hope you got your vote, you know. Uh, Jeremiah Wright maintains that Barack Obama came to see him, wanted to meet in a secret place. This was in 2008. Yeah. And then he said, well, come over to my house. He come, went over to his house, and Barack Obama begged him not to preach anymore. And they, somebody apparently offered him, not Barack, but somebody else, 150000 to shut up. Jeremiah Wright said, no, I'm offer not going to shut offer up. Offer me 150000 to shut up. I'll be the shutting up as person you've Did ever seen. Did you hear seen. that, Jay Garrett? 150000 And I'll shut up. <laughs> now they're going to say, he, he solicited a bribe That was on a the joke, radio. Course, right? That was a joke. These are all jokes. That's called radio shtick, Jay. Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> not intended for use. Contain the possible damage. You know what? That's really a hard thing to sell to church leaders. I mean, I'm telling you, you know, like the Baptists. I mean, they're pretty strict on the old Bible. The Bible's not kind of gay. I mean, I'm just telling you. I mean, (laughs) the Bible's not kind of kind of gay. That's an interesting way to put it. But you know what? The the Catholic Church is not kind of gay. They've been a little. uh, They've um, been. They've um, been. They've been a little light on pedophiles in the past, but they don't like gay. Well, they don't publicly like gay, but they don't really uh, do a whole lot as far as with the the pedophile thing either but if you think about it though the church as an institution it's as political as as the people in washington 
we've see, all seen these movies about what really happened with you know this and that and all the backroom deals that are made. Oh, you know what really goes on. Right now, when the cameras are on, yeah, all the all the uh, evangelicals are going to be evangelistic. That's what they're supposed to do. All the politicians are going to appear state stately, but when they're behind closed doors, come on. You know, speaking of this secret thing, I, uh, Gates came out and and spoke about this. They had an agreement. They had an agreement on that Saturday when they went and killed bin Laden. You know that picture of the Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton, the President, everybody watching it in go down by room. video in the yeah. situ- situation room. They had an agreement, Gates said, that nobody was going to discuss this. Nobody's going to discuss it. He said by Monday it was all over the place. He goes, hey. <laughs> How do you not? I mean, the highest echelons of our government can't keep a secret. Right. We got it. We got it. We got it. We got it. We got to go tell everybody. Go, hey, honey, I got to tell you something really important. We got Bin Laden, but but don't tell anybody. <laughs> That's like at Christmas time when you get that Tickle Me Elmo doll. You can't wait to call Grandma and tell her what you got. I said something in the privacy of the bedroom yesterday, and I unleashed on somebody, and, and my wife goes, don't you ever ever let that leave this room oh we better we better change the subject right now huh? i mean i mean because you know you know what the bottom line is people do say things behind closed doors that they wouldn't normally say right right and if they say them in public then all of a sudden we hold them to this high moral standard right let's face it we all say things off the air or in the you know back room somewhere that we wouldn't say can jay garrett bug this room when we're off the air <laughs> uh Elizabeth Warren, who is a Senate candidate for Massachusetts, called on J.P. Morgan Chase CEO Jamie Dimon. That's a great name. Yeah, What's your name? Is. Jamie Dimon. Financial expert. To resign from his post on the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, citing the need for responsibility and accountability. They actually fired three people at J.P. Morgan, but not him. Huh. He's under some pressure, but who knows whether he'll survive or not. You know, it's some, amazing when something goes wrong. Okay, who do we fire over this? Yeah. In my law office, I guess I got to start doing that. Who do I fire with this? Bray, the next thing goes wrong, I'm just going to fire you. Okay. Well, you know what, what's great about, about companies like, like oh, J.P. Morgan? You've got somebody, their PR person, that talks to the media. And this person's job is to be calm and to say, well, we're through this, we're through this, some business explanation. But to know the CEO's in the back room going, $2 billion? What? Two billion billion dollars. You're right. Where did it go? You're right. You're right. When they come out and they say, "This doesn't affect our," like you know, this is what this is what Diamond says. We we made five billion dollars. So even if we take the write off of two billion, we will still have we will still have made three billion dollars. But meanwhile, you're right. Who the hell? And you know, you know, Jamie Diamond is dropping f bombs. Who the freaking (laughs) f and f and was supposed to be f and watching this? My God, we're all gonna die. Yes, exactly. I mean, two billion. Dollars. You know what? Well, we need to start our own Saturday Night Live because we come up with better skits than they do. Find me $2 billion. Tell me that would not be a great – that should have be been hilarious. a great skit. Where's the $2 billion? <laughs> Do you think this the CEO would be freaking out like he invested with Bernie Madoff? And he comes up – he comes out on television, meet the press. This just really affects the capital and our bank. And yeah. It's something that we can absorb, and it's not going to hurt any of the customers. So calm. It's business as usual. Right, then he gets right. off. Where's the $2 billion? <laughs> dollars? What happened? What am I it's paying like, you people for? Hey, it's like that uh, MF Global, uh, John Corsine. You know, there's like billion yeah, dollars missing. Right. Nobody knows where it is. There's no so cash about <laughs> the it. Accountant, the accountant, the audit. No, we don't know where. where I don't what know money. where the billion dollars. You, you, you seen a billion dollars? I haven't seen a billion dollars. Yeah, I, I gave it to Joe. Joe didn't have any more. <laughs> Frank gave it. Put it in his wallet somewhere. Steve's got it. Who has it? <laughs> Golly, man. That's a uh, lot of money. That's a lot of money. It's just a sc- <laughs> Asked on a recent late night talk show host, Obama, which one magical thing, if he could snap his fingers, he could get it done. Obama said, cut federal subsidies for oil companies and use the money to develop more alternative energy sources. He just can't get enough of Solyndra. Speaking of a billion dollars, he just can't get enough of Solyndra. Let's see if I could snap my finger. Jobs? When we come back, I'm going to have to tell you about my call that I got from the Romney campaign about my interest in the VP job (laughs) on Real Talk 1160. Remember, Real Talk 1160 has Michael Savage, noon to three today, Monday through Friday here on Real Talk 1160. And now back to the Bulldog. This is Eric Dieters, the Bulldog on Real Talk 1160. 
Why do people think Niedermeyer's negative? He was a he was a very good commander of the Animal House fraternity, sergeant of arms, and liked to smoke that pipe outside in his chair in the yard and wore that shiny metal helmet that they got hit with a golf ball. Was mean the flounder. Was mean the flounder. Shot by his own men in Vietnam. I wonder, you know, if, another insult. To, can just think if your name meant something like that. Like, I'm calling it a Hamilton. Four home runs is a positive. Like, Niedermeyer apparently is negative. How about this? You're an Obama. What's an Obama mean? Like a socialist? Going to be a new adjective. You're in a big Obama. Uh, Mitt Romney, vice presidential team, did not call me, but apparently they've called Senator John Thune. Republican of South Dakota who said, you never rule out opportunities or options in political life. Let's face it, folks. Vice president, there's some bad things about the job, but it would still be cool to be the vice president. One heartbeat away from the main job. You get to go to a lot of state dinners. You get to live in a pretty nice house in Washington. Rack up frequent flyer miles. I mean, you know, you're the vice president. Get Get to star on Saturday Night Live, or at least people play you on Saturday Night Live. And you don't get all the headache that the president has. Absolutely not. I mean, I, I'd be vice president if they called. Too controversial. I, you know, they were, I heard a rumor that they were going to call me, but Jay Garrett contacted them and said <laughs> he does not have the character to be vice president. Can you imagine? Jay Garrett cost me the VP slot. Yeah, well, we don't know that for Another way that, that I have been punished. I can just see it now. We'd all be, all the talk show hosts would be saying what the vice bulldog meant to say was. <laughs> You're right. Not an armed march, a march with people who have arms <laughs> and legs. I did say no bullets. Right. Now, see, everyone talks about an armed march. No one ever talks about a legged march. It's a great point. You know. And I specifically said we just want to scare the hell out of them. Yes. And let's face it, a bunch of people showing up with guns would scare the hell out of them. Arms and no legs? Yeah, I'd be pretty scared. Uh, More than 230,000 unemployed workers lost their jobless benefits this weekend as portions of federal programs expired across several states. All told, 409,300 long-term unemployed Americans in 27 states will have lost upward of 20 weeks of federal unemployment benefits by this past Saturday. Even as many state jobless rates remain high. Man, you got to go out and get a job. But the post offices are staying open. That's right. Uh, Between September 2008 and August 2010, 6.9 million American jobs were eliminated. Barack Obama says they created jobs. Uh, It's now time to save your house. Yes. Excuse me. Buy your first house. Apparently now's a good time to buy a house. Home prices are down 20%. Motivated sellers, huh? According to, to the Huffington Post, Yahoo, 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 confirmed in a su- Sunday afternoon press conference that CEO Scott Thompson will step down effective immediately. Now, get this: before resigning, according to the Wall Street Journal, Yahoo's Scott Thompson told the board of directors he's been diagnosed with thyroid cancer. Now, I want to say this: first of all, cancer sucks, yeah. and I hope he's okay. However, I wonder if he was playing the cancer card to try to keep his job. Maybe. You never know. Hey, man, I got thyroid cancer. You can't ask me to resign. You know why that guy— That's that's cold. The board goes, "Uh, Scott, we're really sorry about your thyroid cancer. Did you bring your resignation? (laughs) You you, you (laughs) keep your benefits if that's what you want. (laughs) Now, does he get to keep his benefits? I'm sure he does. You know why they want to They're probably giving him a billion dollars to leave. That's what happens yeah. when you leave as a CEO of a big company. Thank you for your hard work. You, you ran our company to the ground, and here's $1 billion as you go out the door. Actually, that's that, the reason that they let him go, he lied on his resume. He, that's right. He, he said he lied on his resume. He said he had a degree in accounting and in computer science or something like that, and he does not have a computer science degree. He lied. So remember that when you go apply for those summer jobs, kids. Don't lie in your resume. Don't lie. I had to fill out this form. This is hilarious. I had to fill out this form. And uh, Jay Garrett and his his crew are saying that I lied on the form because I answered a question. I'd never been fired from a job. And they said, yes, he was. He was fired. I said, I wasn't paid to work over there for four years. 
Yeah, you can't fire someone you you're can't not paying. You can't fire somebody you're not paying. That's true. Uh, the company, J.P. Morgan, is going to accept the resignation of Chief Investment Officer Ina Drew, who will never be working. Oh, by the way, a local story. How about that woman that just got busted for stealing 220000 from her employer? This is the third employer oh, that yeah. she's stolen money from. She's got two convictions. She's already working somewhere else. They don't. They keep hiring. Does anybody not do a background check on this is woman? Is looking at her resume? This, yeah. was, this is the third time she's been busted for stealing from an employer. Wow. She's Two pretty, convictions. She's pretty good. And she's already working somewhere else. Now, can yeah. you imagine that morning, this morning, her employer, uh, whatever her name is, uh, Jan, um, um, we're going to have to let you go. <laughs> right. yeah. uh, we, well, first, can you give the money back? <laughs> you, uh, how much have back. you stolen from us so far? She could work for J.P. Morgan. I mean, how many times do you get? Really? I mean, <sighs> I, she must be pretty good. She must be pretty good. Imagine what she could do if she did it legally. TC, if you've got all this money that you're making from a Christian broadcasting system and, you know, you're piling it up on the sidelines oh, yeah. and you want to invest it someplace, you need to invest it in sand. Uh, all this oil and gas drilling, the fracking, they need a lot of sand to do this. So there's a sand mining boom. Really? Who would ever thought, put it all in band, sand, man? <laughs> sand, man. Sand, man. The sand, man. Isn't the sand, man, the guy that puts you to sleep? Yeah. But sand, sand in your man. eyes makes it burn. You shut sand, your eyes. You can't man. open it fall asleep. I was afraid of sand, man. Gotta like sand, man. Sand, man's good, man. Uh, let me see. Uh, our national debt as of today is only $15 trillion. Only. $719 billion, $597 million. It's only fifty thousand per person. <laughs> That's all. That's every man, living, and child. Little Riley, my little Riley owes fifty thousand. Come on, Riley, fork it over. Is she working yet? We know you're only one years old, but by golly, give us that fifty thousand dollars. That's right. We first communion money, first. we're gonna garnish it before you get it. Your first birthday money, hand it all over. That's right. Poor little kids are gonna get all their money taken, their lunch money taken from them. Their first communion money, their birthday money. They pay back $50,000. Oh, my God, TC. You know, I think that number's just gotten so astronomical that it's just so iconic. Nobody really expects us to repay that. I you mean, know, come on. I advocated this, that maybe America's just going to have to file bankruptcy. Yeah. I mean, we still have all of our buildings. We have all of our people. We have all of our things. Yeah. America just says to all our foreign creditors, uh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You're not going to make Greece pay? We're not going to pay either. Exactly. You know? Greece doesn't have to pay. We ain't going to pay. And I got a question. <laughs> When you're the United States of America, who bails you out? Nobody. In other uh, words, yeah. Germany, France, they're all bailing out Greece. Yeah. You're in who bails China. us out? Nobody can bail us right. out. Well, what are you going to do? Uh, this is pretty bad for uh, Mexican tourism industry okay. suspected drug gang killers dumped 49 headless bodies on a highway near mexico's northern city of monterey and one of the country's right. worst atrocities in recent years the mutilated corpses of 43 men and six women whose hand and feet had also been cut off were piled on the highway when did this happen uh, just this past weekend now can you imagine really? the bus the bus the tourism bus driving down the road in monterey highway there was monterey a, monterey Driving down, driving down, dri driving down, and saying, and to your left over here is the Aztec, uh, da, 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 da. and over here to the right, and over here is forty-seven. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Ah, don't look, don't look to your left, don't look to your left, people. <laughs> uh, yeah, not good for the tourist tourism industry. Bad for the tourism industry. TC, I'm feeling the groove. Meet you down at the Headhunters Bar. Memphis thing on Real Talk 1160. Eric Dieter's the Bulldog on Real Talk 1160. I want to give credit to this joke to the radio station, Shanna Ward, who provided this to me back on April 29th. And uh, here's what we do. I have someone who puts together the routine stuff in the newsletter. I mean, you know, like the birthdays, which, by the way, we got it wrong. Albert Einstein was born on March 14th, not today, and we had his birthday down. I don't know how this happens. It's all uh, relative. The, you know, what happens today in history and the joke. But the bottom line is when William picks out a really bad joke, by the way, 
He used a joke over the weekend, which I didn't even, it wasn't even a joke. I didn't bother to change it. I'm like, what? But uh, we save, and by the way, if you get a really good joke and send it to us, what we do is we save it. So when William's joke stinks, we put on a new joke. And Shanna sent me this joke, and it is a this knee. This is the backup joke, the joke this, that came from the bullpen. This is the knee-slapping joke right here. All right. Zero to 206 seconds. Bob was in trouble. He forgot his wedding anniversary, and his wife was mad. She told Bob, tomorrow morning, I expect to find a gift in the driveway that goes from zero to 200 in six seconds, and it better be there. She's watched too many of those Lexus bow commercials for Christmas. The next morning, Bob got up early and left for work. When his wife woke up, she looked out the window, and sure enough, there was a box gift wrapped in the middle of the driveway. But it wasn't Alexis. Confused, the wife put on her robe and ran out to the driveway, brought the box back in the house. She set it down on the kitchen table and she opened it. And there she found a brand new bathroom scale. <laughs> <laughs> Bob has been missing since Friday. <laughs> Is that not great? Huh? Zero to 206 seconds, baby. Man. Bob's got a sense of humor, but his wife doesn't. That's a, that was a good. Thank you, Shanna. Shanna, that's yeah. a good one. Now, that, that's the closer right there. Shanna, yeah. I can tell you right now, Shanna does. She gives us good jokes. I don't Excellent. know what we would do without Shanna because sometimes – I don't think William has a very good sense of humor. <laughs> Some of his, I read him. I like. Uh, where's the punchline? You know, hey William, jokes need a punchline. We can dis- <laughs> let's dissect them, shall we? Uh, my quote today is from George Washington. By the way, I gave him the book to to pull the quotes from. So be prepared for some great founding fathers quotes. The determinations of providence are always wise, often inscrutable, and though it decrees appear to bear hard upon us at times. It nevertheless meant for gracious purposes. Poetic George Washington. That went right over my head. (laughs) Today in history, first of all, today in history is a really, really sad day in history. In 1988, the Carrollton bus crash. Oh, really? 27 killed, people burnt, just tragedy. You know, that changed the attitude towards DUI forever in this country, not just in Kentucky. Church group coming back from what, Kings Island maybe? Kings Island. Yeah. Sad, sad, sad. Terrible. And uh, I'm going to discuss the aftermath of that coming up. Uh, Let me see. Today and also in history, in 1607, the first permanent English settlement in the New World, Jamestown, Virginia. Yeah. 1787, delegates gathered in Philadelphia to draw up the United States Constitution. Jay Garrett, I just want you to know that I support the Constitution. Uh, 1921, Florence Allen is the first woman judge to sentence a man to death. I don't know why that's news, but by golly, a woman said, you're going to hell. I'm going to sentence you there. Uh, 1939, Lena Medina, the world's youngest mother in medical history at the age of five. No way. That's impossible. No way. That's impossible. Doesn't, didn't happen. 1955, the Warsaw Pact is signed. Uh, U.S. Supreme Court in 1973 approved equal rights to females in history. And today, in 1998, the last episode of Seinfeld on NBC that's 14 years ago. Commercials were two million for 30 seconds. Incredible. Like the Super Bowl. And now we have famous birthdays for May 14th. Mark Zuckerberg, Facebook 28. Happy birthday. Mark, enjoy your billions. Kate Blanchett is 43. And George Lucas, Mr. Star Wars himself, 68. Happy birthday to all of you. Oh, my goodness. That's disgusting. Now, look at that. I just Googled Miss Lena Medina. That can't be factual. You should read that out loud so people can get that. No, um, I, that makes me sick to you look You talk at. about it. You, you, you do what you're doing. I'll read this and All get right. back to you. All right. Military d- deaths, we are fortunate that we have none to report. Weather forecast today, scattered storms, high of 77. Tuesday, sunny, high of 80. Wednesday, isolated storms. Maybe if I gave the forecast more often, I would pass up Bob Herzog as the most popular 
Northern Kentuckians. Oh, we could do that, you know. If you're hurt. just if you're just tuning in, Northern Kentucky Magazine did the best of and most favorite of, and they they had this category called favorite Northern Kentucky celebrity. Boy, this is going to make my enemies mad. Number one was Herzog, the weatherman. Number two was Chris Collinsworth, who clearly should have been number one. And number three was yours truly. The third. I got a bronze medal in celebrity. <laughs> hey, I wonder what know. I would be in Cincinnati. I guess I wouldn't be third. It's a little bigger pond. I'd probably just be fourth. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's, that's pretty incredible, I think, really. Yeah. That Collinsworth finished behind the weatherman. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. A uh, feel good song of the day. We're not we we're not going to do. Wouldn't it be nice? Uh, again, we've already done that. Uh, let me see. I got a great history story. Shall we have a history story? On a freezing cold Christmas night, George Washington brought the tattered remnants of his army across the Delaware. His troops were in wretched shape, decimated by previous battles, worn out, cold, and ill fed. Nonetheless, Washington was leading them on a surprise attack on Hessian soldiers occupying Trenton, New Jersey. The Hessian commander, Colonel Johann Roll, was attending a party that night. To him, it was inconceivable that the disorganized colonials would dare him out an attack. Around midnight, a local farmer, a British sympathizer, came to the door with a message. A servant took the message and gave it to Roll. But the colonel didn't want to interrupt his card game. He stuffed the note in his pocket unread. At daybreak in a freezing sleet, Washington and his sleep-starved troops attacked. Their powder was so wet that many of them couldn't fire their weapons. So they used baseball bats. No, baseball wasn't prevented at the time. They used muskets as clubs. <laughs> the Kragi Hessians received quite a Christmas surprise. In fact, they were completely overwhelmed. 900 Hessians were taken prisoner, and Colonel Roll was mortally wounded. As a doctor cut away his clothes to treat him, the note fell out from his pocket. It turned out to be a message warning of Washington's approach. If he'd have taken the time to read the message, he might have lived to see the Americans defeated and Washington as prisoner. Just think the course of history. Now, if you are a lawyer working in my office, now you know why I tell you all the time, respond to emails and phone calls as soon as possible. It might be the next big case. You never know. Uh, related, preparing to cross the Delaware, Washington stepped into a boat containing Colonel Henry Knox. He gave the 300-pound officer a nudge with his toe and uttered these immortal words, which gave a much-needed lift to his cold and miserable troops. Shift that fat, Harry, but slowly, or you'll swamp the damn boat. <laughs> Apparently, he really did say that. Somebody wrote that down? Picking on old Henry. They must have written that down, huh? By the way... William also was given the uh, directive to come up with a good rhetorical question of the day. This was his best effort for today. Steak or chicken? Wow, William, that's really going to be a thought-provoking thing. No, so good. I changed it. Now, let good. me just tell you, let me just tell you the bulldog's superbity over William. Steak or chicken versus this. This is the bulldog. This is why I'm superb. Do rainy days depress you or make you a philosopher? Much more profound. That just make me want to take a nap. That's about it. Well, okay, then at the impression you want to take a nap. Why do we do a rhetorical question now? Because we're trying to get people to think, <laughs> TC. Here's only, here's, Stop ruining it. Here's a rhetorical question that goes over in my mind day after day after day. <laughs> Betty or Wilma? Mary Jane, Mary Ann or Ginger? That's an easy one. I know it's Mary Ann. You know it, baby. Mary Ann. I married a Mary Ann. Isn't that weird? Ginger's too high maintenance. For a night, Ginger, man. <laughs> <laughs> ginger. <laughs> uh, Betty or Wilma, I would definitely take uh, Betty. Yeah. Betty. It, you know, Red, you have Red Barney Ed's Rubble arm. was much more happier in the mornings yeah. than Fred Flintstone. Fred was grumpy, but Barney. Barney, Barney was a happy man. Hey, Freddie boy. We know why. Guess what Betty did for me last night? Uh-oh, I might be in trouble for discussing Barney or Wilma. <laughs> Sorry, Jay. Barney and Wilma? On Real Talk 1160. This is some guy with a microphone here to tell you that the makers of great tasting slimy living green water proudly promote same sex illness. Of course, we leave that up to the individual's tastes. Green water, available at Green Kick. And now back to the Bulldog. 
Eric Dieter's the Bulldog on Real Talk 1160. I just saw a picture of your girl, Lena. Lena, Lena, Lena. According to Wikipedia, she is the youngest person ever to give birth. Is that Lena now? Oh, that's Lena uh, as a young adult there. She's still alive, apparently. Um, Had a son, uh, lived to be about five. How did that happen? How did a five-year-old conceive? I don't know. I don't know. They took her in the hospital, thought she had uh, a tumor. You know, they found out she was seven months pregnant when they took her to the hospital. Who was the father? I don't know. Her father. That is weird, yeah. man. Yeah, it is. But uh, she survived. The, uh, v- the visitation, folks, for Sergeant J.P. Euling of Westchester will be held at his alma mater, Moeller High School in Cincinnati, tonight from 4 to 9 p.m. And a funeral for Sergeant Euling will be held Tuesday morning at the St. Michael's Church on Spinner Avenue in Sharonville. In lieu of flowers, the family is asking that donations be made to the Wounded Warriors Project. So, uh, J.P. Euling, God bless him and his family, the Moeller community, the Westchester community, the core. It's incredible. So sad. So sad. So sad. So sad. So sad. Don't you, you agree? Shift gears a little bit. We can shift gears. How do we... I'm promote, a great gear shifter. How do we promote um, uh, a drawdown in Afghanistan and at the same time say we're going to stay there for the next however many years? Doesn't make sense. Nah, you're right. I say we just get the hell out. It, why are we still? I mean, it makes no sense. Are we still fighting terrorism? No. I mean, no. We, we've had the war on poverty, the war on drugs, the war on terror. And these, there are things we these do, wars never work out good, do they? No. Yeah, well, if, if you don't have a, a, a physical right. person, a body. You, you can't attack a concept. You know, I, I still say that the uh, – although although George Bush won, did the right thing, we had to drive Saddam Hussein out of Kuwait. I mean, that was, yeah. a, that was an a, act of aggression. And he made the right call by not going to Baghdad. And he, yeah, he went in, did what he exactly. wanted to do, and he got out. And that's the old generation, the, the, right, the, the great generation uh, perspective. I mean, he fought in wars. And it amazes me that the people that fight in wars understand it. Like Colin Powell was the big detractor within the Bush administration of the Iraqi war. You know, he's the one. And they humiliated him by saying, well, you go sell it to the U.N. And um, you look at how Reagan used the military. Grenada. Yeah. Libya. You know, you just use your firepower, but you don't have these full-blown wars. Right, right. Just a couple of good jabs. Yeah, and that's all it takes. And, you know, you, w- with the type of firepower we have, the idea of, you know, these ground wars, you know. And here's the other thing is, too, TC, I'm a student of history, and I guarantee that anybody that went to West Point will support this if you've studied military history, as the only way to take over a country is to take over the country, right. and you conquer it. This idea of, uh, we're going to invade the country, take it over, turn it back over to the people, and we're just going to be a little peacekeeping force, doesn't cut it. No. Doesn't cut it at all. Nope. Um, Japan, totally different situation after World War II. We really did rule the country. Right. For a long period of time. And uh, com- completely different dynamic. Yeah. Um, Japan submitted. But, I mean, this, this whole idea that you could invade a country and then, like, okay, we're here just for a little while while your soldiers learn how to keep your country safe. Right. Doesn't work. See, in order for that to work, we would have to bring in our guy to run the country, first of all, bring in our military to be their military. <laughs> bring them and, home. And bring them home. Let and them then, build bridges. And then you train them, you know, you got to train them. All the, all the money you spend. It just doesn't make any sense whatsoever, TC. And these people do not like us. They do not like us. You know, you know it's been proven that the whole collapse of the Eastern European communist control bloc, part of that came about because we defeated them from within with American culture. They say that, for example, American radio, free radio, which the Eastern bloc countries were listening to, getting westernized yeah. um they wanted blue jeans for example they wanted right. cowboy boots it's almost like they wanted to have western civilization they wanted to be free from within as opposed to the middle east 
you're not going to go in there and say, you shall be like Americans. Right. Exactly. It's not, it's not going to work. The hierarchy of the countries, the men of the countries, it's not going to work. The power to bees, you're never going to change and force upon them our way of life. Right. And you know what, TC? You assume there's a bunch of smart people in the government and the military that would understand this. See, that's why I say there's another reason why the government does what it does. Something uh. that we have no idea what, why or what it's for, but there's some purpose, some reason. We just don't know about it. Well, I don't know what it, that could be, but all I know is that government makes some really stupid decisions. Yeah, but then they throw stuff in our face to distract us. By the way, did you hear the latest coming out of California? Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger? Uh, they only got a $16 billion budget deficit. That's all? Yeah, only $16 billion. What did he do when he was governor? Man, did he, was it already running into the ground when he got I, there? I got distracted with my housekeeper, and yeah. the, the whole state went to hell in a handbasket. It sure did. It was the housekeeper's fault. Now, why don't they <laughs> occupy California? There are a lot of high rollers in California. All the celebrities there, have is, these million-dollar Is there any occupying homes. going? I think they occupied in Oakland. Of course, Oakland is a, Oakland's kind of like the uh, poor section of California. Why don't they occupy Beverly Hills? Occupy George Clooney's house. <laughs> Occupy George Clooney's house. There you go. <laughs> All these celebrities hey, have these hey, million-dollar hey, homes. Hey, I, I got to just say something about this $40,000. Let's, let's shift gears again. Okay. $40,000 a person, and they raised for Barack Obama, who is re- running for re-election for president. They raised $16 million. Chicken or fish? Now, I got to ask you this question, TC. All of these do-gooders and all these liberals giving that $40,000 to Barack Obama. Just think of all those homeless people, all of those unemployed people in California that could use a little bit more love from these guys. Just think of all the better reasons $40,000 could be used than the giving it to President Barack Obama's re-election campaign. And you know what? They always pick upon other, you know, the use of money and the rich and the 1%. Well, let's pick on their discretionary use of their money, 40000 for Barack Obama instead of fully fund a soup kitchen. That's right. $16 million soup kitchen. $16 million would help a lot of jobless, homeless people yeah. in good old California, wouldn't it? A lot of those people would have to work there. $40,000. Yeah. It's sick. I mean, that's ridiculous. That's I, if I was a billionaire, I wouldn't give $40,000 to a guy running for president. And then you can't really get upset at AIG for having their $40,000 oh, weekend. I got something for Mitt Romney. Hold on. I got, you talk while I get in my box. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the morning show on Real Talk 1160. Coming up, we have the Huckabee Report in just about three minutes. Mike Huckabee on Good Real job. Talk 1160. And now back to the Bulldog. I can show this. Romney for president, do not bend, photo and clothes. Now, this is from the Mitt Romney campaign. I mean, it's a foot-by-foot thing. Romney, believe in America. Visit us online at MittRomney.com for up-to-date campaign news. And he has sent me a picture of himself. Standing outside a barn with a flag, and it says this, Eric, thank you for believing in America as much as I do. America does not just exist for the people. It has been made exceptional by the people. A free people pursuing their own dreams and achieving success in their own ways. This is a moment that demands we return to our basic values and core principles, Mitt Romney. And then he asks me for money. 35, 50, 100, 250, 500, 1,000, or even 2,500. And I guess I could frame this picture and act like Mitt's my personal friend. The Bulldog on Real Talk 1160. Eric Dieter's the Bulldog on Real Talk 1160. Got Prankster and Glenn on the line before we get to them. Rand Paul took a swipe at Obama's recent support of gay marriage on Friday, saying, quote, I didn't think his views on marriage could get any gayer. <laughs> <laughs> that's, pretty, that's pretty good. Well, Ran, they did. Nice play on words uh, there. Latest poll. See, these things happen over the weekend, and we cover them in our newsletter, but i got to bring them up to date to you on Monday. Romney is now up seven points on Obama, 50 to 43%. Dun-dun-dun-dun-dun! Yeah. 
Glenn, are you panicking? Romney ad hits Obama for criticizing mothers. Great ad they had about Ann Romney. Uh, you know, I think I covered this on Friday, talking about uh, M- Happy Mother's Day from Barack Obama's team yeah. of Bill Maher and them attacking Ann Romney. I mean, that wasn't, a, and, and unfortunately, that was not the president's fault. That was not his administration. And Ann Romney was very gracious. She thinks Michelle Obama is lovely. As everyone can appreciate, it's a very difficult position to be in. Very shrewd on her parts because the people that don't like Obama, she doesn't yeah. need to add to it. Right, right. Um, Obama's representation is horrible. Friday, CBS reported Obama had arrived in L.A. on his, quote, private jet. He calls Air Force One his private jet, and he said the troops were fighting on his behalf. Now, this is great. Lovely Th- nice of him. This is being reported by the New York Post. This is good stuff. Bill Clinton thought so little of Obama, mocking him as amateur, that he pressed his wife last summer to quit her job and challenge him in the primaries. A new book claims, the country needs you, the former president told Hillary Clinton, urging her to run this year according to the accounts of the conversation, including Edward Klein's new biography. And Hillary kept saying, loyalty, 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 and apparently her daughter and Bill said, this guy's terrible. The country needs you. You need to run. I believe it. I believe it i believe it no no that's industrial strength dumb that would just divide the party they i'm not saying that. it would be smarter dumb i'm saying i believe it went down you think so really bill clinton bill clinton hates barack obama i think they're setting up for the 2016 election i really do bulldog oh, yeah. let's let's ask glenn you know, i don't think hey he glenn likes- who are you going to vote for between me and ellery in 2016 Oh, without a doubt, Hillary. Oh, shucks. She, I mean, you're talking God, about a, a supremely smart woman compared to what? You. You want to comment about <laughs> this $40,000? Well, actually, I wanted to comment about that, but I also wanted to comment about uh, Ann Romney. What do you expect Ann Romney to do? What, say something bad about the most popular woman in the United States? She's not the most popular woman, except with travel is. agents. Travel agents, she's pretty popular. No, she's the most Taurus. popular woman in the United States. For tourists. I, I know the fact that she's a woman and an African American probably scares the hell out of you, but those doesn't scare just, me that, at all. That is the truth. Spain and, and let likes also, her. Let me also say this about Rand Paul. Way to go, Rand Paul. I wonder if he got Rand's those, my man. If he got those quotes from his father's old newsletter. Rand you, Paul you remember, is a great hey, American. Do you remember the Ron Paul newsletters, uh, Eric? Yes. Okay, so I wonder if Rand got that from that. And let me. Rand let me Paul's you, his own is, man. Isn't, isn't Rand Paul the same guy that thought that we should get rid of parts of the 1964 Civil Rights Act? Rand, oh yeah, that's a real great representative. Rand Paul uh, is a great American. So, but he didn't say that. He's the only United but, States senator that wanted to cut but, but, but 500 Eric, billion the, out. You didn't answer the question. Isn't this the same Rand Paul that wanted to get get rid of parts of the Civil Rights Act? No, that's not what he discussed. What, what, You're what twisting his words. What was he discussing? What Rand discussing Paul was saying is rights. a lot of that is unnecessary like is what? what he said. Like what? Give me an example. Because America is equal now. <laughs> hey, TC, are you laughing or is it just me? No, I'm laughing. No. <laughs> you, but you know what's funny is that in, you, you, in your lily white world, Eric, I think you honestly lily white. that. Not all no, lilies are white. Honestly, some lilies are yellow. <laughs> some lilies are pink. Ask, Eric, They're not you, all white. You honestly believe Stop that we're, bad we're an equal lilies, world Glenn. now? Stop <laughs> bad-mouthing lilies. I had an Aunt Lily, and she was a wonderful woman. She wasn't Lily White. She was a shade of tan. And, 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 and by the way, the, the, the author that you talked about uh, with his new book, uh, that guy has been thoroughly discredited. This is the same guy that said that Barack Obama might be a secret Muslim and that he's a practicing Muslim. He is a Muslim. A he is a Muslim. You, you know, Eric, it's, it's common. He's a like, socialist Eric, Muslim. You know what, Eric, with, with all due respect and, and in all seriousness. You don't need to give me any it, due respect. Well, well, good, because you don't get any. But in all seriousness, it's comments like that are the reason why the Republican Party is in the state that it's in. And state that it's we're be, in. We're and winning this state. It's gonna be 50, no, 50, and then, 50 and to 43. Republic, 50 to 43. The re- the 50 to 43. Hello? And he's a sitting president, Jesus, and you're I'm, losing. Losing. What? 50 there, to 43. There's a reason why the Republican Party is about as popular as jock itch and a yeast infection right now. Well, then how been? bad is Obama and the Democrats since we're well, winning? Well, how, how, how are you winning? How are you winning? 50 to 43. Latest poll. Wait a minute. You're 50 citing, to 43. Wait a minute, Eric, you're citing a Rasmussen poll, right? 50 you're, you're citing to 43. A poll, right? 50 oh, to 43. You are. Eric, like I said before, hey, you guys, uh, and, uh, and, uh, hold on, hold on. Yeah, one at a time. Here. One at a time. Yeah. 
Uh, well, believe me, I dropped my seventh grader off at school, and Eric sounds about as bad as she does. I mean, really? What are you going to do? I sound as bad as what? I hear you. I mean, come on, Eric. I'm taunting you. You got your, your license suspended. You're a clown. No, Rasmussen is a Fox generated poll, and you didn't mention that on your show. Glenn, you just threw the Glenn are you going to move to Switzerland when Obama leaves? Hell no. All right, all right, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I had to kill you guys' mics here, okay? I'm going to send you both to your rooms if you don't do one at a time, okay? Now, we, can we try this again, gentlemen? Or your company's going to have to go home, and you're going to have to go to your room. He's out. He's already out. Okay, next Prankster, caller. what do you got for me, buddy? Well, you know, you're talking about Hillary. I want to talk about Panama Canal in a minute. But first, on Hillary, she may be running the country right now instead of President Obama. Because it seems like all her policies is his policies. He might be a puppet for her. You think about that. She, uh, Bill was a puppet and she was president then, and I, th- I still think the woman's running the country. And uh, I respectfully disagree. Well, I, 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 I think that all of the policies, especially the gay marriage, and her health insurance uh, that she tried to come up with is everything that Obama is doing, is everything that she would do. No way. I'll bet you I'll bet you money, prankster. Hillary Clinton, if she was president, wouldn't have just came out in support of gay marriage. Wouldn't happen. Bill Clinton knows how devastating that's going to be uh, in swing states, how devastating that's going to be in the South, the Midwest. I mean, that's that's just difficult. I, you know, I mean, let me tell you something, folks. I, just from a pure political standpoint, I'm just talking pure politics. Let's forget, let's set aside everybody's moral opinion of whatever you want to say about it, okay? The bottom line is, is being for gay marriage is politically stupid. I'm not talking about the... Mo- Again, I want to stress this. Regardless of what you feel about it, morally, whatever, This it, we are not ready in this country uh, when you when you look at the, the, the political makeup of Virginia. North Carolina just voted it down. It's an important swing state. So Obama just publicly announced a position that North Carolina voted down. And it's right next to Virginia. Another swing state. And you look at the way this is going to play out in the all the state. Ohio, are you kidding me? Do you really think a majority of Ohioans support this? And then when you look at what it does in the uh, African-American community, might just lose him a point or two, but it's going to lose him some. Union, blue-collar workers, the Christian evangelicals, and Baptist Catholics, I mean, I, I heard an interview with somebody very involved in church voting issues, and they said that there was a lot of pastors that were kind of like on the sidelines, kind of neutral, not knowing what they wanted to do. And his position is, there, he's lost them. And to prove that he knows it's an issue, he's got to make phone calls to him after he comes out with it. I mean, regardless of what you think about gay marriage, from a pure political standpoint, it was a disaster. It's uniting the Republicans. It's getting the uh, Christians all charged up and ready to go. Uh, You know, they say it it would help him with young voters. Well, he's already got young voters. He's already got voters in New York, California. He's going to win those states anyway. So I'm just, from a pure political move, it was a bad, bad decision. It was a free gift. And look at the jump in the poll numbers. The only thing that's happened when it was deadlocked to a 50 to 43 is the gay issue. And, Glenn, you can bash Rasmussen all you want. Rasmussen is a very, 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 very credible polling outfit, just like Gallup is. So there's my say. What do you think, TC? Do you think his position coming out on gay marriage, good or bad politically? Don't think he had a choice. Um, I don't, I really, I don't think it's going to affect him that much. I really don't. All he did was just not lose um, the voters that he already has. I think the timing was horrible. Thanks, Uncle Joe. <laughs> I know. Joe forced that. I, I think the president would have stalled and stalled and stalled with that. And those people that think this was choreographed, not so. I mean, Joe Biden, the internal, like you were talking about what really goes on. You yeah. know, Barack Obama said, holy cow. Joe, what are you doing? Right, exactly. And Joe's apologizing, and you know he forced it. I mean, Joe, good old Joe. Uncle Joe. He was portrayed very well on Saturday Night Live. <laughs> when we come back, I'm going to cover some 
news events that happened locally over the weekend on Real Talk 1160. Be at work at 9. You can still listen to us all day. Take us along with you. Go to realtalk1160.com. Click on Listen Live. You can also use the TuneIn Radio app on your iPhone or Droid. And now back to the Bulldog. We got a special Oracle status to give. Today is a very special birthday. Sensible Don's birthday is today. Is it really? We got to give him Oracle status. Well, happy, happy birthday, birthday, Don. Yeah. Uh, I have not been able to verify. I have not had a chance to verify this, but this was sent to by a pretty reliable fan. Mamie Eisenhower had one person on her staff. Jackie Kennedy won. Carter won. Barbara Bush won. Hillary three. Laura Bush won. Michelle Obama twenty. Two, $172,200 share, Susan, Chief of Staff, Susan Chair, Chief of Staff, $140,000, Jocelyn Fry, Deputy Assistant to the President and Director of Policy and Projects for this First Lady, Desiree Rogers, $113,000, Special Assistant to the President and White House Social Secretary for Mrs. Obama, Camille Johnston, $102,000, Special Assistant to the President and Director of Communications for the First Lady, Melissa Winter, Special Assistant to the President and Deputy Chief of Staff to the First Lady, $100,000. David Medina, ninety thousand, Deputy Chief of Staff of the First Lady. Catherine Lilyfield, eighty-four thousand, Press Secretary of the First Lady. Francis Starkey, seventy-five thousand, Director of Scaling, Scheduling and Advance for the First Lady. Trooper Sanders, seventy thousand, Deputy Director of Policy and Projects for the First Lady. Aaron Berno, sixty-five thousand, Deputy Director, Deputy Social Secretary. Joseph Reinstein, sixty-four thousand, Deputy Social Secretary. Jennifer Goodman, sixty-two thousand, Events Coordinator for the First Lady. Alan Fitz. 60000 Trip Director for the First Lady, $50,500. Dana Lewis, Personal Aide to the First Lady. Samante Muchabai, 52500 Deputy Press Secretary of the First Lady. Kristen Jarvis, 50000 Traveling Aide to the First Secretary. Tyler Lichtenberg, 45000 Associate Director of Correspondence for the First Lady, 43000 Samantha Tubman, Deputy Associate Director, Social Office. Joseph Boswell, 40000 Executive Assistant to the Chief of Staff to the First Lady. Sally Armbruster, 36000 Staff Assistant to the Social Secretary. Natalie Bookie, 35000 Staff Assistant. Delilah Jackson, 35000 Deputy Associate Director of Correspondence for the First Lady. One million five hundred and ninety-one thousand two hundred in annual salaries to take care of the first lady. Having all the green water you can drink, priceless. <laughs> TC, if true, and I don't know how they can make these names and salaries and positions up. That is incredible. And you got that from where? Where that? It's an outrage. A Bulldog Nation member sent that to me. Is that a credible member? It's a very credible member. Okay. Where'd they get? I mean, what was their source? I like to. I would like to see that. Uh, it was really. their their source was the Canadian Free Press. The Canadian Free. What the Canadians know? About? Because America no longer has a free press. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the American jury. That is an outrage. Now I got another oracle to give. I've admired this guy. I've only met him once, shook his hand. But uh, Cincinnati Business Courier did a nice feature on Fred Marison, and. Uh, he is a big-time capitalist and entrepreneur here in Cincinnati. And I read this story with admiration about his life and all the things that he does with venture capital and everything else. And uh, I just wanted to give him Oracle status. Uh, let me see. Dailies, according to Dan Monk of the Cincinnati Business Courier, national circulation is up 5% for Sundays, but not for the Enquirer, the Hamilton Journal News, Middletown Journal, uh, the newspapers in the tri-state that do... D- uh, Sunday editions. Um, the March edition of the Enquirer was off 1.4 percent, down to 278,000 people. Uh, the, the Kentucky Enquirer did a great story about the budget cuts impact on part-time court staff uh, in Kentucky, and they did some nice stories about the Boone County, Campbell County, Kenton County, all the clerks and everything else, and. Uh, I have to hand it to him. John Middleton made a good uh, comment. Uh, the work that deputy clerks do is important. They make sure warrants are issued for the right person. They make sure your driver's license isn't suspended when you pay your citation on time. So do you want someone who is paid a low wage responsible for those tasks? No. And they make some great points about how, you know, 
they, they've had to cut uh, salaries, benefits, and everything else for these workers. Right. And don't get me wrong, government has to cut back. But let me tell you something, folks. The court system is the wrong place. I'm all for government cutbacks, okay? Yeah. The court system is the wrong place, man. It's the beginning of anarchy. It's the beginning of chaos. It's the beginning of social unrest. So I want all the deputy clerks and all the clerks in Kentucky, Boone, Kenton, Campbell, and all the rest, to know that Bulldog Nation supports you. On the other hand... On the other hand, I just had to bring that up. Maybe they'll have to streamline their system there. They won't have these frivolous lawsuits <clears throat> that we have against certain attorneys. Again, too, um, what you're saying is like, do you want these people working low wage jobs that are, you know, keeping you from having your license suspended? Look at the, the cuts that they're going to have to make with the SEEK program in Kentucky, Boone County, and all that. Do you want low wages and programs cut from the from you know the education system as well? You know. No, I like education. I support the court system. I support one point. I do not support one point five million for the first lady staff. <laughs> uh, I wonder how many staff that Jane Bashir. I think her name is Jane, um, but First Lady Bashir of Kentucky. If she has a bunch of staff, I don't know. you know, it's kind of bad when your assistant has assistants. Yeah, well, that's a pretty powerful. <laughs> I'm the assistant to the assistant to the assistant. I'm the deputy assistant to the assistant of the deputy assistant to Michelle Obama. <laughs> and still making great money. Oh, TC, hell in a handbasket. Coming up next is Laura Ingram's radio addiction, which follows my superbity. And I'm always good at picking the topics that she she chooses and my guess is she's going to continue to cover the gay marriage issue yeah. i'll guarantee you she's going to comment about newsweek she's also going to comment about the commencement addresses over the weekend uh i'm sure she'll cover Rand paul's comments you know she's going to be covering everything nationwide politically yeah. as she does so well then followed by savage, savage and i'm sure savage will have some fun comments about the newsweek article uh the newsweek cover as, as well and then of course we got mike huckabee Witting wise. who's the gentleman who yeah. will not say anything harsh if he does he says it harshly gently i like the way he he does his show i know you know because you're right if he has something harsh to say he says it gently tc would lo- would leave me to go be huckabee's producer because he's no. less harsh no it wouldn't be as much fun now come on i love the oh. excitement around here here's the a big here here's a big TV. announcement on thursday yeah for all of the fans all of the clients all of the friends uh of the show uh we are ohio clients of course uh we are having a party here from 5 to, to 7 or 8 uh, p.m. in the parking lot. Uh, we're going to have some music. We're going to have Montgomery Inn. Ooh. We're going to have uh, food. Uh, you can come see my office. Big deal. It's just an office. Uh, but we use it as an excuse to have a little party, appreciation party, promotional party. And uh, we want to, this is true, we are going to unveil at this party, TC. I'm going to share, I haven't shared this with you. You will be able to drink green water what? out of green water bottles. <laughs> Vinny himself, the labels, the whole bit. I'm going to have to miss that. The official green water launch party. You're going to have to miss it when you won't be here? Oh, I got a class. You got a class? Six o'clock. Well, we'll give you a bottle in the morning. <laughs> yeah, but Vinny's going to be a big hit. Now, we're not going to have to drink it on the air or anything like that because, you know, that could be embarrassing. Green water. It's slimy. It's good. It's all natural. It from is. a stagnant green pond. Yeah. One of the best campaign lines I've ever heard was from Larry Forge, who called his opponent, Larry Hopkins' campaign, it's as stagnant as a green pond. Ooh, you think you'll let us use that for green water? Absolutely. Green water, stagnant. As a green pond. <laughs> I like that. He also said a lottery was a tax on hope and an excise on misery. We got time for some guy with a microphone? Absolutely. Real quick, all right. Where is some guy with a microphone? I had him here somewhere. There he is. This is some guy with a microphone here to tell you that the makers of great tasting, slimy living green water proudly promote same sex illness. Of course, we leave that up to the individual's tastes. Green water available at Green Kick. Same sex. I love it. Individual's tastes. Every dog has their day. I hope tomorrow is yours on Real Talk 1160.